Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Aleksandra Łukaszewicz Alcaraz and I and I'm an assistant professor at the Polish University abroad in London. I would like to invite you for this uh, series of lectures, the whole small course at the Polish University abroad that I will be realizing the upcoming academic year. This course will be dedicated to the methods of analysis and interpretation of art. Then, uh, trying to prepare myself and my audience for the course, I would like to present today the short incentive uh, for, this, uh, for this series of lectures. As the first speech, I have chosen to talk about Artur Danto and his contextual theory of art, which I consider to be essential for the understanding of the art to today. It is not just one theory. This is a kind of a meta-theory, opening up, giving space for the multiplicity of theories uh, for different currents of art. Uh, Artur Danto uh, was a philosopher, aesthetician and uh, art critic um, related with the University of Columbia and um, coming from post-analytic current in, in American thinking. And he was asking himself what differentiates and art objects from different kind of objects that we can meet in everyday life. This was a kind of more specific way of posing the question what, what it is art. And these discussions um, became very strong and um, fearful about the half 20th century because the experience of avant-garde and post-avant-garde has challenged uh, the understanding of the art until now. Um, Dadaist art, conceptual art later on, a pop art, um, has posed the questions about the specific characteristics that differentiates the object of art from different kinds of things that, that we encounter and um, we manage in our everyday life. Therefore, uh, Arthur Danta was thinking, what is the meaning and function of art? What does it mean to be art? The emblematic um, art object um, influencing all these uh, disruptions, even you can call it like an earthquake that happened in art theory and uh, reflection is, of course, uh, The Fontaine by Marcel Duchamp from 1917 that, that was banned from, uh, from the exhibition of Society of Independent Artists in, in New York. This regular urinal was elevated to the status of work of art uh, due to the gesture of the artist, due to the signature that artist pu has put on the object. This uh, was really a kind of a rude gesture, you can even say, because art was usually um, thought as a kind of sublime thing or sublime realm uh, where we can experience re refined emotions we can grasp uh, deep understandings and not focus just on a urinal. This is not the um, um, object that pertains to the sacrum uh, a part of the world, but rather to profanum. Then this Dada uh, object, object truth, has really challenged the notions of art and work of art. It also uh, has challenged the uh, very traditional understanding of the art pieces as imitating the world outside. So-called um, imitative uh, theory of art uh, is um, strongly criticized by Artur Danto. 
he has shown that if we think that uh, the work of art has to reflect the world outside, we have to agree also that the mirror reflection is a piece of art, art because it is reflecting the world outside. And, and this seems like to be too much. This kind of approach seems to be too broad. And um, like in popular reason, uh, common reason, we cannot agree that each mirror reflection should be considered as art. Uh, of course, Danto has noticed that imitative theory has got its uh, advantages because it allows to approach a broad realm of, um, of art. A lot of um, paintings, sketches, uh, sculptures from the history of art um, can be explained by means of this theory. But also, um, this, uh, this theory has its limits. Uh, has its limits and we cannot say that the reason that the piece of art is not uh, imitative is uh, can be just in the insanity of the artist, in lack of the ability to paint well. Uh, but then we have to think that uh, art has got some other function. It's about something more than just about imitating the world. And thinking about the art, not imitating the world, but doing something else, started to be a kind of necessity of the day. Um, in, since uh, since avant-garde, since of course Duchamp, but also later uh, in the following year, following years, and in, uh, strongly in the 50s. And here I would like to mention one uh, important American painter, also um, recalled by Arthur Danto, that is uh, Jasper Jones. Um, he was a kind of precursive for, uh, for pop art and very influential for contemporary art. And for example, when he uh, presents a flag or when he presents three, three from uh, zero, we cannot say that he's imitating anything Although these uh, paintings, these um, uh, works of art, are really looking like a flag or looking like three. This is not a representation. We cannot say that it is a representation of a flag or oh, this is a representation of three. What happens here? We have got another flag. We have got another three. Flags and numbers are these kinds of objects that cannot be represented uh, as just a, a copy. They are just, uh, when they are multiplied, we have just a new exemplaric uh, object, a new flag and a new three. Mm. This has become explicit in 50s, as I say, but Danto traces uh, the roots of this approach in um, uh, art much earlier, especially in post-impressionist art of Cezanne and later like in, in Picasso Cubism. But uh, already in Cezanne's uh, paintings, we cannot say that um, the uh, main aim of the painting is to represent the world. No. Cezanne was not trying to represent the world, he was trying to make the impression of looking at it, to reconstruct the impression. And this is something very different than reflecting or cre creating a kind of uh, a mirror reflection of the world. This caused, of course, also uh, so famous Cezanne's deformations that, that we can trace in, in his paintings the banded uh, line of the table or the, the moved pattern of the wallpaper where there is the portrait of Madame Cézanne. This is not about the representation. So Danto says that these paintings are not thought to be representations of the world, but they are new parts of the world, new things in the world. They are not even trying to cheat us. 
they are not like grapes on Zeuki's paintings trying to uh, make, uh, fool us. No, they are like um, um, US dollar, false US dollar, but with printing, not legal tender. This, uh, this writing or this explicit gesture uh, makes it um, impossible to be used for, for fraud. So post-impressionist paintings, Kubis paintings are like these banknotes, like these notes, not legal tender, not trying to cheat us about the world and its imitation, but being a new part of the world. However, there appears a question. If we have good new things in the world, if we can have uh, not only uh, the portrait of Madame Cezanne or um, um, uh, ladies from Avignon, but when we have bed of Rauschenberg or when we have bedroom ensemble of Claes Oldenburg, then uh, or even the Fontaine of the Duchamp, how we can differentiate these kind of objects that are works of art from different kinds of objects that are not works of art. How we may differentiate this bed by Rauschenberg of bed that we should just lie on and have some rest. Danto considers in depth this question, how to differentiate a bed that is a piece of the artwork and the bed that is an everyday object. In order to consider this, he calls for a testadura, so a uh, so naive person who cannot uh, see the difference between these two beds and is uh, really able to lie down being in a museum or in some other space on the bed of Liechtenstein, for example. Uh, what causes uh, this problem? What causes that Testaduro uh, cannot differentiate between uh, these two kinds of beds? The reason for this is that uh, he or she cannot um, see the difference between um, different uses of the word is. Sometimes is can be used as the predicate of existence, that something exists. But when we are talking about the something that this bed is a piece of art or that this leg painted some uh, some painted fragment on the painting is Icar or Icar's leg, then we are not um, making any uh, claims on the ex existence. Is is not used as a predicate. Danto says that this is 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 of uh, artistic identification. So this is a kind of metaphoric, cultural, meaningful, but not touching like this ontological level of existence. So Testaduro is missing a kind of sense, a kind of understanding uh, on this epistemic level, differentiating between two uses of the word is. And this is very important if we want to differentiate the piece of art from uh, another kind of object. And also if we want to um, div uh, claim something more about the art ob object, if we want to interpret it, if we want to analyze it, if we want to have it meaning. Because um, just looking at the thing just basing on our perception mode, we are unable to see the difference. This is the bed and this is the bed. I'm looking at it and I don't see the difference. If we have kind of uh, th uh, theoretical understanding, uh, if we know artistic theories and meanings standing behind it, then we can differentiate. But our perception, our sight is not grasping. Uh, uh, any differentiation on this level. Danto gives here an example of this, um, talking uh, about um, making paintings 
on the basic of the first and third uh, law by Newton on motion. The story that Danto tells us is as follows. Two painters had to paint two paintings on uh, the walls of the library. One had to depict the first law of motion by Newton and the second had to depict the third law of motion, uh, motion by Newton. Um, and these images look as, as this, as rectangles just crossed uh, with a line in the middle. And they are co uh, completely indifferent from the perception side of this. They are just identical. We cannot see the difference. But how we can explain this? If we look at the first one and um, know that it is depicting the first law of mo motion that is stating that in an inertial frame of reference an object either remains or uh, at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a force, we know, we see then that there is a point moving in a constant velocity through the empty space. And then when we look at the second painting, that is B painting, depicting the third law of motion by Newton, um, that states then when one body extends, uh, exerts a force on a second body, the second body simultaneously exerts a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction on the first body. Then we see, not just know, then we also see uh, like two uh, kinds of uh, bodies exerting forces one upon the other so that it keeps in a certain equilibrium. Then what, uh, what we can mm, conclude from this experiment this is that although um, on the perception side we don't see any difference but the theory matters. So this context of a, a theory atmosphere uh, of a theory, kind of meaning behind, is uh, something that uh, makes uh, different two objects, either the object that pertains to the uh, world of art and the object that pertains to everyday reality, and also two objects in the world of art that uh, have got different kinds of uh, understanding behind them. Danto uses uh, a few more examples, but very interesting also and striking one uh, are Brio Boxes by Andy Warhol. Uh, Brio Boxes um, were made by Warhol from, uh, from the plywood, so they are stronger in, in the material than the original boxes are used for washing powder. Of course, these original boxes are from hard paper. But a part of this material that we cannot uh, notice just looking at the, at the boxes, uh, boxes made by the artist and boxes that we can have from the shop are identical. They are not the same as the whole things from inside, if we have a look in it, but they are the phenomenal uh, character is the same in our perception. So again, here we see explicitly that this what matters is the theory behind this what, that we can refer in case of Brio boxes by Andy Warhol to pop art, to object truth of Dadaism that is transformed already in the post avant-garde movement and that we can uh, talk here about the uh, diverse artistic strategies from the 20th century. Without it, we have got just a commercial product. This approach can help us uh, also understand and interpret the newest um, artworks that we can that we can meet, that we can encounter. Of course, there are so many examples that can be recalled now. I would like just as an example to call for one when 
uh, Anneta Grzeszczykowska is performing again Cindy Sherman untitled film stills. Cindy Sherman created her series of her photographs in 1977-1980 and uh, Grzeszczykowska restages the, uh, these uh, photographs 30 years later. How to understand this gesture in the process of redefinition of women's presence in the uh, public space is impossible if we just look at the images. We have to know the story that is behind them. Otherwise, how we can approach such uh, works of art as Erased the Kuning Drawing by Robert Rauschenberg from 1953. Rauschenberg has bought the drawing by the Kuning. He bought it for a bottle of whiskey and the Kuning knew what Rauschenberg is planning to do with his drawing. He was not very happy about it. Uh, and Rauschenberg, it took some time uh, because the drawing was very precise. But this artistic gesture of erasing the Kuning drawing is very meaningful. So this empty space, this uh, empty page is very meaningful because it means the end of abstract expressionism uh, represented by the Kuning Apollo and the beginning of pop art represented by, for example, Robert Rauschenberg uh, or Andy Warhol. So, if you want to participate in the following lectures and learn more about various approaches to art and aesthetics, please follow us on the website and join the course. Thank you.